today, I'm going to show you how I upgraded these boring flower jar labels into something way more exciting. Sometimes these boring label maker labels are fine. If it's something purely functional, go ahead. But if it's something on display, something that you'll see every day, it's not good enough for me. Hi, I'm the Maker Monster. This is the Maker Monster Show. And I think that we can find happiness by bringing our ideas and our imaginations to life. So the first thing I have to do is design the new labels. So I opened up Illustrator and threw together a little Art Nouveau inspired label for the different types of flour I've got in my kitchen. And then I sent it over to the vinyl cutter to cut it out. There are other ways to make labels like this, but using a vinyl cutter is the easiest. No need to make things more complicated than they need to be. Just cut out your design in some vinyl and then take away the parts that you want recessed. Anything still there will be the raised parts. It's that easy. No need to invert the colors, flip the image or anything like that. Just cut it out exactly how you want it to look, peel away the parts that you want recessed and that's it. I also cut out a thin line around the design and that's gonna make things a lot easier later on. I'll show you. Now, just put on some transfer tape, put them aside, and that's it. Now, it's time to get to the metal part. I'm gonna be using these brass sheets, but you can use copper as well. I just like the look of brass. First, you need to give them a light sanding to remove any coatings and give you a nice surface to work with. Then, take a bit of acetone and remove any oils or residues that might be on the surface still. Now, it's time to apply the vinyl. It doesn't have to be perfectly centered, just enough that the whole design is actually on the label. Otherwise, you're just wasting your time. But I'm sure you knew that. I left myself a little bit of an overhang so I can fold it around the edges to protect them. Then I just covered up the back with a piece of scrap vinyl. Basically, the only parts that you want not covered are the parts of the label that you want recessed. Anything else you want vinyl on. Ta-da! Oh man, I am already excited about how these are gonna look. These are so much better than those boring labels. Now, this is what's gonna make everything happen. The acid. This isn't burn your face off acid, but it's a good idea to wear gloves anyway. We don't need a lot, so I'm just gonna pour out a little bit into a container big enough to fit the plate into. Now, we ideally want our plates to hang upside down in the acid so that when the acid is doing its thing and eating away at the metal, everything falls down instead of gunking up our design. I've seen people do things like tape their plates to foam so they can float it on top of the acid, but that just seems like too much to clean up afterwards for me. So I'm just gonna hang it inside the acid with some tape. That's a trick I learned from my friend the Craftsman. So rip off a piece of tape and stick it to the back of the label. But don't drop it in the acid just yet. I found that if you use a cheap chip brush to put a really thin layer of acid onto the plate, making sure you cover all of the metal parts, it's gonna make sure you get a really nice, really even etching without any air bubbles. Now you can drop it into the acid, which can be a little tricky with gloves on. Okay, so how long you leave it in there will determine how deep of an etch you're gonna get. I did a few tests and found that an hour is what I'm looking for, but you can do a few tests on your own and figure out what's the, what's the right depth for what you're going for. So set a timer for an hour and have a dance break. Before the hour is up, fill up another container with a little bit of water and some baking soda. This is gonna neutralize the acid, stop the reaction, and make it safe for us to hold afterwards. Time's up! Take the labels out of the acid, which can be a little tricky with these loose gloves. Jensen, remind me to buy some better gloves. Okay. And then just drop them into the baking soda. They'll bubble up a little bit, so let them just sit in there until the bubbling stops. And then take them out and clean them off. Now it's time to peel off the vinyl. This is where we really start to see how they're gonna look. Ooh, very exciting. Now, this is where the line I made earlier is gonna help. It's time to cut them out. I've tried a few different ways of cutting them out and this is the most effective that I found using this little jeweler's saw. I got this whole setup for around $20 and it works great. There's a link in the description to the one that I got. Now you just gotta cut it out using that line as a guide. Cutting off small pieces at a time until you're done. Then I went back and cleaned up the edges with a rotary tool and a little file. And then I used a really tiny little needle tool to get into those tight corners. Oh man, look how good this looks. It's really starting to look like a fancy label now. But there's one thing we can do to make them look even better. Because we all know 
old things just look cooler. So why not make these look old? Then we can pretend we got them at some thrift shop and they're vintage labels because we're just super cool. So take a bit of fine sandpaper and sand over the rough edges a bit and give it a real quick buffing with some steel wool. But not enough to take off all the markings from the etch because this next step is gonna make those look even cooler. So clean it off real quick with a bit of acetone and then it's time to prepare the patina. Pour a little bit of hot water into a container and then squeeze in the patina gel. Make a nice stinky label for the baths. No, make a nice stinky bath for the labels. And then make another baking soda bath to stop the reaction afterwards. Then just plop the label down into the patina and watch it slowly darken. Once it looks sufficiently old and awesome, take it out and drop it into the baking soda. Dry it off a little bit and then give it a really light buffing with some steel wool. This will just brighten up the raised areas a little bit and make it look even cooler. Now, it's a good idea to seal it so it stays looking exactly like you want it instead of actually getting old and patinaed over time. Why would we want that? I'm gonna use some paste wax for that. Just brush on a thin layer, let it sit for a bit, and then buff it off. Oh man, look how good this looks. Okay, now it's time to put it on the jar. Get rid of this crap. I'm using a piece of PVC pipe to just put a little bit of bend into it. Then I'm using a piece of carpet tape on the back to hold it onto the jar. Just put it on the jar. Oh man, look how good they look. Look how good they look. These look so good. I am so happy with these. Now, this is just a small project and it only took me a couple hours to do, but I'll get to see it every day in my kitchen and think about how cool it is that I made these. These were just some boring, uninspiring label maker labels, but then I took a little bit of time and made something so much more exciting by learning something new and then trying it out. I even got a little carried away and made a few other signs to put up around the shop of some ideas and thoughts I wanna remind myself of. That's why I like learning new things and making things I've never made before. It opens up what's possible for me to do in the future, even if it's something as small as not settling for boring labels and making something a bit more fun to look at. If you'd like to see another cool process you can do involving metal, check out this video on electroforming. Otherwise, I'll see you next week. Bye.